Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another tutorial on Royal Courses. I hope you are all healthy and safe home with your closest ones. This whole situation with the virus and lockdown has really forced humans to slow down and think about their actions and emotions. And what do people usually do when reflecting on emotions? Well, the answer is quite simple. They make art. Which is what this video is going to partially be about, as you can probably see from the title. Today we will be talking about digital art and I will be giving you some tips and tricks that I find useful myself. I will do that by showing you how I did this particular piece here in my own comic. I made this small comic as a fan art at Among Us some time ago when I first started with digital art and I knew next to nothing about it. So yeah, I would like to share some stuff with you and maybe help you make something better as your first attempt. This was the best that I could do at the moment. So yeah, first we're going to be selecting brushes. So there are two kinds of brushes that I am constantly using, especially in this type of art. And that is the hard round brush and the hard round pressure sized brush. So what they do, hard round pressure sized brush I use for the line art and the sketches simply because it gives me more option, more control over the line. You can see here how like soft they are, how you know you can make them really like interesting. Whereas with the hard round brush, it's much different because it's plain, it's always in this one um, width. Uh, so, yeah, you really have to like make sure to make it either thin or thick the way you need it, or else it's just going to always be the same. Uh, I use this one for the coloring simply because it's much more convenient to color with the same size, you know, with the same thickness instead of coloring it with the changing thickness that is going to really just be annoying to match constantly, you know, you, you don't press always the same and then this, this happens instead of this. So yeah, that's very important to know. Another thing that is important to know that you see this flower here, I made it like with different colors. Like instead of just being uh, outlined with black lines, I chose this little like pink color that is a bit darker than the flower itself. And how I did that without like ruining the rest of the drawing and without like using already colored line, um, I used clipping mask. That's basically um, using another layer and attaching it to the layer underneath. What it does is it attaches the entire layer to the content of the layer underneath, which is in this case line. So if you want to color one particular line, you simply see go like this, and you don't have to worry about like excess around the edges. It will always be like that. If you release the clipping mask, you see this happens. So yeah, right click, create clipping mask, and you have yourself a nicely colored line. Yeah. That's very useful to know in my opinion, especially when you want to make that kind of art where the lines are colored. So yeah, another thing if you want, if you will be switching between two colors, you want to make them known right away. So you see, now it's like, uh, now it's black, and if I just switch here, see, oh, I yellow can stay. See what happens. And this is very very cool and very quick uh, tool. <laughs> I made a little smiley here. Never mind. 
<laughs> um, it's, it's very quick, it gives you that kind of control over the situation a little bit better, you don't have to constantly be searching for the same colors. Also, if you want one specific color from a certain image, you can just click on it and see, now you have that color. So yeah, that's very, very interesting and very useful. But yeah, now I'm going to be showing to you something else. You see, I made sketches for the scenery. Um, in this case, the little one isn't as important. It will still be here and it will still be crying. <laughs> so yeah, you see, this placement, I could have put this body above it, but why I didn't do that is simply because I wanted to know where is what at what moment. I can of course move it around, see, but um, it's better to just leave it where it is, uh, where you, unless you of course want it somewhere else. In that case, yeah, here, this is the move tool, uh, you can just press down B, which is which says in the brackets. Um, and yeah, move things around in that specific layer. Um, yeah, the sketches don't have to be perfect, you can make them whatever. It's just that it gives you um, the idea of where is something and like how big it is, what shape it is, how does it affect the surrounding, etc. etc. Um, so yeah, that's about sketches. Uh, yeah, you want to like in my opinion, it's best to hide or make the layer invisible when you want to draw things since like if I had that ghost here, I would be constantly like worrying whether I'm hurting this line or not, but here when I like turn it off, it's just you see, it's the body and then you just you see, draw the line art over. It's very quick, it's very easy, and it gives you much better control over the situation instead of just having everything in there at once, like in traditional art. Um, so yeah, I then turn it off, I show this one, and then draw the other one, you see. And now I have myself this line up. Now what I want to do next is I want to color it, but I want to color it in certain like wait, this is already lower than a pass. So yeah, I don't want to have my color above, my color layer above the layer of line art because then I would have to be really careful at where I'm placing what color. Instead, I can just move it underneath, and um, it will show me the exact color that I need. Of course. You can leave it as this, it's still trans it looks transparent, but if you want to make it really transparent, you would have to either think of the colors, or as I already did before, I just lower the opacity. And what it does, it really just like makes this layer here as transparent as you want it to be. See, so you can make it very transparent, or you can make it like just slightly transparent. Then like maybe somewhere in the middle is good enough. And now you have yourself, you see, colored um, background even though you didn't think of those colors. Like they are still red and gray and pink, but here you see that they are colored differently. Also you can move it like here if you want, it will color the lines as well which is really, really neat, in my opinion. So yeah, Photoshop in itself is very interesting program to work on. It has all those options that you can use. It's very, very good, especially if you are like looking forward to drawing something um, complicated, something that's unique, and you want somewhere to start, this is probably the perfect way to start, 
just uh, getting to know the program. Like, I mean, you can't even have a good relationship without getting to know one another. So, like, yeah, if you want to make this long-lasting relationship, make sure to get to know your Photoshop. So, yeah. I think that's about it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this all and have learned something new and useful today. If you like this tutorial, make sure to like and subscribe. Maybe check out the channel for more useful tutorials. Um, I have seen some really amazing stuff out there and I have seen that there will be more amazing stuff coming soon. So yeah, make sure to check out Royal Courses, um, check the notification bell, and of course, uh, I wanna already like um, apologize for the background noise. I don't know what it is and I couldn't tune it out, so I'm sorry for that. And thank you for staying so long here. Bye!